with Milos about the match? I, was, I did a lot of things really well and I had an idea of how I wanted to play and I was happy I could execute and sort of live up to that. Into the quarterfinal stage for the fifth time here. It's um, a bit of a happy hunting ground for you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always been very positive for me here and I've always found a way to, to play well and, uh, you know, uh, fresh physically and mentally at the start of the year and having some time to train in the off season. It, does me a lot, a lot of good. Given your injury background, uh, is that is that a key? I guess having that rest leading up to this this tournament. Yeah, uh, it's that, but it's also the fact that there's nothing like for across those weeks. There's really nothing that uh, in the immediate future, a tournament that I'm nervous about skipping, that I might go to early or something like that. There's a few weeks there that I can really focus on training and not have to worry about, hey, if any issues are coming up, like, how's this going to feel in four days? No, I have a bunch of weeks ahead of me to get ready, and that allows me for some continuity. You know, it was almost better in the first set that he had the break points, and, like, he was thinking maybe he's going to win it, and then the disappointment of you coming back and taking it almost works to your advantage, especially with the break, obviously, in the first time in the second set. I don't know if it ever is good to be down break points, you know. He was uh, getting in more service games than I was in that first set. I don't think I won many returning points until that game that I broke. So maybe there's a positive way to spin it and to see it. But I think for me, it's about doing my things well. And I'm happy that I uh, turned down those uh, opportunities of his pretty quickly. And then I, I sort of turned things around, played well. And then I continued it right away in the second as well. On a serving role like this, do you feel that coming in practice? Or is it health related? What's it, like? How much overthinking do you do? But how great you're serving right now, you know, as you carry it forward? I don't. Uh, I was really struggling with my serve through the practice week. So it's something like uh, it only uh, the first match. It didn't feel necessarily that great because it was a little bit windy on that court. And then the second match. You can sort of feel it uh, that day of warming up. I sort of just found my rhythm. It wasn't. I just wasn't necessarily sure what to do and where my rhythm went. And once I get my rhythm and once I have continuity of playing, um, it comes for me. Serving is the most natural thing for me to do. So once I can figure out, hey, this is sort of how I need to go about it, I can I can sort of work on that. Today, you haven't lost a set this week yet, so you're obviously playing very well. And, and today you had two set points against you and you you fought them off both with aces. When you're having a really good game serving-wise, you have that confidence that you can just come back and do that kind of thing? It helps. Um, you know, when you don't have to play out the point, you step up and you come up with a big serve and get the free point. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things I think I'm doing well at this point. So regardless if uh, it was to come back, if I can get that first serve in, I think uh, I put myself in a good position. I think I'm moving well. I think I'm taking uh, the first opportunity to be aggressive. I think I'm doing those things well, and I'm always putting pressure. So it definitely makes it easier if I can come up with an ace. But, uh, you know, I, I know I can back it up after that as well. There's a lot of talk in the past year about Canadian tennis emerging as a superpower of the sport, but it wasn't always with you at the forefront of that conversation. I'm curious if that's at all a motivation to remind people that there's still leaves on this old maple tree. I couldn't care less. I just care about how I'm playing and how I feel on court. If it is Novak up next, what do you have to do to, to win that match? Um, I'm going to have to serve well, clearly, and then I think I'm going to have to get myself in, uh, you know, uh, return at a high percentage, make him play a lot of those points, uh, and then try to, try to be efficient on my service games. And... Um, you know, I think we play quite opposite from each other, and he's done a good job in the past uh, neutralizing my serve. So I got to really focus on my things well and find a way to be the one dictating. There were a couple of key moments in the match where you gripped and ripped backhands down the line for you know at, at big moments. How much is work on the backhand part of let's say your preseason ritual, knowing it's obviously never going to be your biggest weapon? just like normal. I don't think we did anything specially about really any part in the off season. I think this off season for me, it was about getting fit, getting healthy. And I think when I'm in good position, I can hit those back ends and I think I'm moving better.
So I think that allows me to to go up for those. And I think that sort of is like the ripple effect. I don't think I've changed anything about my back end. I hit it well throughout some tournaments at the uh, last year as well, but um, I think I'm just moving and doing my physicality part much better. You lost nine losses to, to Novak, but some of them have been close. When you've been close, what do you think's gone right? Um, I get myself in a lot of, at least putting in a lot of returns. So he sort of feels like he has to work on those games. And, you know, um, I got to serve well. Um, Last, I don't know if it was the last time we played, but Cincinnati, I had more of my opportunities than most times. I think I was up a break in each set and these kind of things. So I got to be sharp in those moments, and I got to take them if if they can if I can create them and if they arise. How big was that, or how tough was that mental battle last year, given given the injury, injuries? And and do you feel like you've overcome that and you're mentally fresh now? Um. Yeah, I do. I, I didn't play much tennis last year, so I think for me, the the toughest part in this off season was I I knew I did six good weeks of training, and I knew it would sort of come together. I was hoping I would play well in the first week of the year, but that didn't happen, and I knew I had to sort of be patient for it to come together. And I'm glad it's paying off pretty early, and uh, you know now I have to find a way to continue playing well in this tournament. And then after that, find a way for continuity and to try to create some momentum and so I can do this uh, week in and week out without having to take long breaks in between and sort of regressing my training then having to pick up my training again uh, it would be nice to be able to consistently uh, train and then that way I don't have to really train as hard because my level isn't falling off because I haven't been bedridden or sitting on a couch for uh, weeks at a time observer fan perspective. Do you think Novak is going to finish with more Grand Slams than Nadal and Federer? Um, I just hope I can stop him at this one. Milos, another question on Novak. Of all the returners you face, is he by far the toughest you face? Are there others who are close to him? I think Rafa's close. I, I think it's two very different things. I think Rafa puts in as many returns, but you sort of have a chance to swing away at the first one. Uh, Novak, uh, his is his is a little bit more difficult because he just he goes straight through the middle, so he takes away the first angle, and he stands close. So there's not as much time to sort of organize yourself after. So um, they both have made a hell of a career doing well on that end of the court and punishing players when they let up. A lot of coaches, Mario Tudor, what's special about him? Um, he's been with me uh, for a while now. He's uh, in incredibly loyal and just we continue plugging away from day to day. And um, I just wanted to really focus on getting fit and healthy. And uh, a lot of times before, I felt like uh, once I would stop with somebody, I sort of needed to fill fill a spot or or bring somebody on right away. And at this moment, uh, you know, I'm comfortable and I'm happy with the situation I, I have and the way we're going about the work. And uh, you know, we communicate well and we don't get in each other's way uh, throughout many weeks in a row uh, on, on the road. Like you are 100% fit right now, or at this point, is it more about just managing those little ailments? No, I'm. You know, uh, I feel the little things. I'm sure everybody feels uh, playing uh, four, three set matches uh, within a week. But um, I'm happy that I'm not at this point having any any concern. Anything that I know can't be fixed with a day of treatment or a good a good recovery session. Like it's nice to have those things that seem within grasp to fix for the next day.